everybody. In this video, I'm going to be making a homemade ketchup. And you're probably going to wonder why I'm even bothering because, you know, ketchup's not that expensive. You know, the ingredients list isn't really that bad. I mean, it's got two different versions of corn syrup in it, which is a big turnoff for me. And that's another video. But um, the real reason I decided to do this is because I know the quality of my vegetables and ingredients that are going into this. I know the kind of dirt that these tomatoes have been growing in and they're very nutrient rich, they taste excellent. I mean, there's just really, even the onions, I was going to onions, I know they're, I know they're tiny, but um, they're still really good. I'm tempted often to eat them straight, but I'm not that crazy, but. Um, I'm gonna, li I'm gonna um, include the recipe in the description for the video, uh, um, but just to give you an idea, here's, um, Here's a bunch of celery seeds. Uh, these are cloves, whole cloves. A cinnamon stick, uh, allspice berries, whole allspice. I've got some ground cayenne pepper. I have salt. I am gonna be adding some Worcestershire sauce. And instead of using sugar, I'm using honey. I know um, a lot of you are kind of, some people don't like honey, whatever. Um, it's honestly, everything is always do what you want. This is just what I do. Um, and I happen to know that this honey is uh, raw, and I think it was filtered once to get the, the bugs out. That's about it. So it's, it's pure honey, and it's happy stuff. Now, when it comes to the salt, when you're, when you're canning your food, a lot of recipes will call specifically for pickling salt. And I can't find that very often, and when I do, it's not really cheap, which is odd, because... What pickling salt is, there's two, there's two um, main uh, things about pickling salt that's ideal for canning. One of them is that they tend, they tend to be very fine grain, um, and that's good for uh, the dissolve, it dissolves easily, um, all that wonderful stuff. And that's not really a problem I'm going to have in this recipe, but the more important thing um, about pickling salt is that it is salt. There are no anti-caking agents, there's no iodine additives, nothing. It is salt, pure salt. Um, and I do have that. Now my pure salt with no additives happens to be a coarse grain salt, whatever. And um, this is what it looks like. It says natural sea salt. Now don't get that confused with this fine sea salt. This, and it's from the same company, but this has sea salt and an anti-caking version agent that I don't really want to pronounce because I've actually never seen it before. So this might be coarse or bird that there's no additives. So it won't cloud my food. It won't change the taste of my food. It won't, um, you know, there's a couple of other problems that some of those additives can cause when you're canning. So, and they won't hurt the food. It'll, it just be, it has some undesirable qualities. And my African gray, taking part in the conversation once more. So there we go, and um, I'm gonna be cutting up the onions. I'm gonna make a, a, a cup and a half total of diced onions, and then I'll be um, coring and quartering my tomatoes, and I will probably ultimately end up using my apple core thing, just a little, you'll know. You'll know when you see it, so let's, let's get going. Okay, I was going to use my apple core for the tomatoes, but this sucker is way too dull to get through anything. So we won't be trying that. We'll just do the handy dandy knife here. And I have to, to, um, to quarter and core all of these tomatoes. So, so I'm gonna get going on that. And with the power of editing, That's not right. I'm upside down. There we go. That's better. Okay, so I got through all of my tomatoes. And as you can plainly see, the pot that I chose was a bit too small. So I 
out comes my five gallon brew pot. Dump all that in there. Obviously, if you don't have a five gallon brew pot, but you have a couple of other bigger pots like my collection here, go ahead and do, do what you can with what you have. You toss in these tomatoes, the onions, and the cayenne pepper. Make sure it all gets in there. All of it. My trusty tool here. Okay, before we get the tomatoes and onions and, and the pepper on the fire to cook, what I'm going to do before then is get our um, apple cider t uh, vinegar tea going. Um, I'm a tea person, if you can't tell. Uh, we have to, to heat up the apple cider vinegar, and in it we have to steep um, the allspice berries, the cinnamon, the cloves, and the celery seeds. That's why they're all whole. Now, the celery seeds are very small. I don't know if you've actually seen them. They're really small. I have a green bag here, any home brewer might recognize. But what I happen to know about this grain bag is that when you pull it, stretch it open, those holes, they're going to hold all this stuff just fine, but those celery seeds are just going to slip right through. And I don't want a big nasty mess in my vinegar and consequently my ketchup. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you how, I'm going to take a coffee filter and a stapler, and I'm going to create a tea bag to hold these little guys so they're contained. Let's do this. So I've seen some, some things on the internet about how to do this and they talk about cutting this right here. I don't want to do that. I have a lot of celery seeds and uh, they're going to take up a lot of space. So I'm going to do this a little differently. Pour them right in the middle. And then what I'm going to do, I don't care if anybody likes this or not. Fold it like a taco, and then fold it over a few times, and then stable it. And then, I'm going to fold it up like that, fold it over itself. Now you don't want to get things too tight in here. Um, you do need a little, a little space for all of this to flow, but you also don't want it to roll out, which is what the first staple was for. There we go. I got a little tea bag for our celery seeds, and that we get our vinegar here. Apple cider vinegar um, imparts a very distinct taste that um, helps develop that ketchup flavor. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to be using regular white vinegar for this. It wouldn't be the same. Now I have something for this celery, this uh, cinnamon stick. Can't just drop it in there, okay? We need some more um, surface area to soak on this stick. So I'm going to show you another cool little trick while I make a lot of noise. So here's my cinnamon stick. And I need it to be broken into pieces. Not ground, not whole, but pieces. So here we go. My cinnamon stick. I might be a decent cook, but I also love my tools. So there we go. All broken up into little pieces. And into my grain bag they go. Mm. 
God, I wish you could smell this. My grain bag, time a knot. Drop it in there. Put it on to heat. Okay, so we're gonna we are we've combined the tomatoes and the onions and the cayenne pepper in this big old pot, and we cook them over high heat until they boil, and then we drop the um, well whatever they do. Then we will drop the uh, temperature and boil them for 20 minutes. And then after that, we will add that wonderful vinegar stuff and um, cook it some more. And I'll show you that through the beauty of television editing. Yeah, I know it's not television. Whatever works. After about 10 minutes, this is what it looks like. All nice and soupy. And that's what it's talking about bring it to a boil and it's almost there this is a quite a volume of uh, liquid to heat up in this pot so but it's a soup now tomato soup <laughs> and as you can see after 20 minutes it's more soup and less tomato and this is just the water cooking out of the tomatoes I didn't add anything to it this is just the tomatoes the onions and that cayenne pepper ground up. This is how much water lives in tomatoes. Isn't that crazy? And it's just about ready to to turn down because it's starting to boil. Well I would call that boiling. And what's even better is the skins are starting to come off as I stir it around with my spoon sometimes the skin will come up out of the uh, out of the chasm of tomatoes there. So I'm gonna turn it down about medium, maybe medium low and we're gonna cook it in here for 20 minutes and um, and then we'll add the vinegar. Now look at that. Isn't that crazy? All of the water that was in these uh, tomatoes. Although I do have to confess, I did just add the um, the apple cider vinegar infusion that we had made and um, so there's a little bit more liquid in here but it didn't, it's a good most of this is just straight from the tomatoes. Now I've added that infusion like I said and we're gonna let that boil for another half an hour um, and then and then then it really gets good so yay! Okay so the next step is proving to be a little more complicated than I anticipated. Um, pushing it through the strainer is taking forever and not very effective. What I am going to do I'm gonna give this one a shot. I'm going to send this stuff through my juicer and uh, see how well it removes uh, the solids while still giving me some of that nice little tomatoey texture. So, okay. Uh, so let's get that going. I set it on low because I'm working with some really soft stuff. And then we'll get it going. stuff that's in here so I'm taking out the innards on this little we're doing good I know that I'll probably have to run the, the stuff the the stuff that it kicks out I will probably run it through again just to make sure that I've got Enough the, the liquids and everything out that I'm that I'm looking for, and then um, and then we'll cook it some more. Yay! All right. So I used my juicer. I ran this through a total of five times through my juicer, and these are the only solids that I have left, leaving this much um, of the juice and stuff to use to act to make the actual ketchup. So, yay! And it's like I said, I put it in a smaller pot because I knew it was going to be less. So, right now it's time to add the rest of the ingredients. So we add our salt. 
we add our sugar, or in this case, honey. Yes, my honey is crystallized. It means nothing. And I mentioned the Worcestershire sauce. So here we go. About a teaspoon or so. Just eyeball. Mix all that in. And then we put it over medium heat and bring it to a boil. And then we will boil it. We're cooking it down until it reaches the consistency of ketchup. Um, and that sh is supposed to take about 45 minutes ago. So we will see how, um, how true that is. Okay, so there we have it. Ketchup. It's not quite done, but it's getting close. And it's been boiling for an hour and a half. So, like I said, we'll see. But it is just about halfway down, like I said. Because it said it wanted the instructions say to boil it until it's uh, down by half. And it's just about there, because you can see here is right about where it started. And now it's all the way down here. And it's pretty thick, and it's much, much redder than it started with. Right now is the time to get the, um, the canning jars ready and everything uh, sanitized and sterilized. And we'll start with that. I'll fill up the, um, my big pot in my jars and get them boiling uh, to sterilize those. Okay, since the ketchup is so close to being finished, we're going to start uh, preparing the canning jars and what you do is you you get them in water fill them up with water and then cover them you're basically completely covered in water you get them on the burner and you boil once they start boiling you boil them for 15 minutes and that sterilizes the jars um, and um, and then we'll fill them and that'll be an interesting thing to watch I've got a whole system down because I use the same pot to sterilize them as I do to process them. See the lids? They have this, this ring here. This is a plastic ring. And this is what actually seals everything. And if you boil this, you will destroy this ring. But you still need to sterilize it. So what you do is you bring the water you're going to put it to up to a boil and then turn it down to a, to a slow simmer. Um, and then let them sit in that for 15 minutes or more. And that will sterilize them just fine. The glass jars, they're tough, they can take anything. So now we're going to start filling our jars. Pull one out, and I got to empty it. Good rule of thumb for most things that you're canning. When you're filling up your jar, you fill it up to that bottom neck band. It gives you enough headspace clearance to do whatever it is that you need to do. Now take a lid out of that hot water. So pretty, owie, owie. Place that on there real nice and evenly. Slip the band on, finger tight, and then put it somewhere to cool down. Oh, no, we don't put it somewhere to cool down. But we do get it out of my way. So, one more jar. Should be all she wrote. 
for this batch. to boiling. Yeah, you um, you need the bottles to be immersed up to that neck band, maybe just a little higher. Bring it back up to boiling and then boil it for 15 minutes and then um, we'll be ready to set it out. Um, set it out to, um, to cool off overnight. These aren't actually supposed to be that tight while it's processing. And what happens is the heat um, expands the air that's in there and it pushes it out, but when it tries to go to, when it cools off and it goes to cool back down, that's what creates the seal and uh, sucks the lid down and you know everything's good. So here you have homemade ketchup. You hear that? That's the sound of it sealing. You want to want to make sure you don't touch them too too much. But once you get them out of the out of the water bath, you want to make sure that you tighten these rings down hand tight, because um, then that will help to form the seal. And that pop that you heard, that's the the button in the middle sucking down, and that's a good sound. You want to hear that. Sometimes it can take, they say it can take a few hours. I've never had any of mine take more than half an hour before they pop. Um, but it does take a good several hours, up to 24 hours, for them to cool down completely. And you want to do that before you put anything in the fridge or anything like that. So These, these should stay if they've got a good seal. Um, and tomorrow evening is when you check it. You, you, you touch the top and if it... If it doesn't pop in or out, then you've got a good seal. And this should last you a good year. But um, it won't last that long. This will be gone in a month. That's why I put them in the big quart jars, is because everything that I make is gone quickly. And <laughs> as good as that makes me feel, <laughs> that means I have to do it again next month. <laughs> so. Thank you so much for watching. Um, make sure that you uh, hit the like and subscribe button. I love you all, um, and have a great evening. So, bye. The tomato cutting montage. <laughs>